Is that your room that you actually grew up in? <laughs> yeah. That's so dope that you go back to that house to just like chill and relax and whatnot. Yeah. It's, uh, my mom started changing things around. You know, I left for like a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But now since quarantine, I came back and like I had to move everything back to how I had it and stuff. But it it's is all cool. good. Yeah. So how else are you doing? How are you uh, doing back home, chilling? How are you staying sane during this crazy time? What's happening? Dude, it's great. I've been like spending a lot of time with my family. My grandma, my girlfriend, my mom, my sister, my niece. Nice. Um, we've just been hanging. A lot of board games, card games. Have you been playing any? Or <laughs> Me? No. Well, no, because it's just me in my house by myself. <laughs> like, So if I'm sitting at a table playing a board game by myself, we need to call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you can play on a computer or something. True, true, true. Do you, are, you like, are you into games and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a fanatic for RuneScape. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-mm. It's like World of Warcraft, kind of. I got into it when I was in sixth grade, but I still watch like videos from it. You said it's called RuneScape? RuneScape, yeah. Oh, oh I was thinking like it was one of those like escape rooms. You know what I mean? Well, like, those are fun though. Have, have you, you ever tried one? Yes, I went to one in uh, Hollywood off of Sunset. Did, oh, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. They have like a haunted room too. Yes, and then there's like a gel room, a haunted room, uh, a surgery, a surgery room. Did and you went? There, yes, and I went. And we couldn't figure it out though because we're all a bunch of idiots. But then there's another one um, I went to in Glendale that was really good, really, really, really good. Okay, what was the theme of that? That was it's like a bank robbery, and you got to find all the clues because it's actually in like an, an old school like building that's allegedly haunted. So it adds like all of the uh, effect to it. Did and you what, feel that? Did you feel like it was haunted? You know what's? I am not sensitive to stuff like that. Are you? <laughs> uh, I definitely get in my head sometimes, like about like. I mean, things like that. Like, me me and my homies, we lived in a house. I just moved out, but we believe that it's, like, totally haunted. Like, what were some of the things that happened when you were there that made you think it was haunted? I mean, besides, like, I mean, you're not sensitive to this stuff, but besides, like, feeling like someone's watching you or anything like that, like, there was this one time we were, um, I think we were getting ready to go out or something. Mm-hmm. We were playing Fortnite, and uh, we stopped, and we were going to take a shower, and, like, we are going to start getting ready, so we started doing that and then as i'm getting out of the shower i hear like a glass just shatter and i was like oh the dog probably knocked it over or something and i look my dog's in my room and i'm like Uh okay and then i go and i ask my friend and he's like oh i thought that was you and i was like no clue and there's this glass like just shattered on the floor but like we would hear we would hear like stuff in the attic. Like we actually checked the attic once because we're like, is someone like low key living up here? What's going well, on? Were the footsteps or whatever you heard, was it that loud that you had to go up there and be like, what is going on? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. And like, we looked up what the house used to look like because it was re it was like redone. Mm-hmm. And yo, know, if I showed you the photo of what it used to look like, you'd be like, that's haunted. After 100%. we're done with the interview, I want to see the, uh, the house and see what it looked like. Where was it? Uh, it was in Sherman Oaks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And we debated having like a psychic come over and like fill it out, but we never had that happen. I was no. too scared for them to like invite. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't mess with that. Like Ouija boards. Would you try it? No, absolutely not. Like I went on a, uh, a ghost hunt with Jojo one time and they had the Ouija board out and just like this. And I was like, no, it is time for me to go. Oh, you, I do not. They had, they had it out there playing it. Huh? They were playing with it? Yes. And I was oh, like, no. oh, I don't I want to do a- this. Mm-mm. Did you watch from afar or you just got out of there? I, uh, I got out of there. Okay. Because I, I didn't want anything to follow me home or anything like that. Because that's my biggest yeah. thing. Like, this thing attacking me when I come home. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, following you? Right. Did you have that, like, low-key, like, sense of, like, I kind of want to see it, though? I, yes, exactly. Okay. But did you have that in your house? Because I know you didn't want the psychic, but I feel like I don't yeah, want Yeah, I did. Right. But I told them, I was like, you guys can do your thing. I'll just watch from like way over here. And yeah, I never did it. it that, you know that little thing that like moves when you like talk to it? They have like, it's like those two metal poles. Yes, the, 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 uh, not the, um, 
Yeah, yeah, you're doing the thing with the pet. Yeah, yeah. A little cross if it's yes, like go straight if it's no. I could never, ever, ever, ever live in yeah. a house that I would feel like to be haunted. That and knowing my crazy. friends, when like you have your fingers on the Ouija thing, like they probably move it. Like I wouldn't trust them to like not move it. You know? <laughs> That's so funny. So okay, we 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 uh we know you lived in a haunted house. I want to talk about you being on Broadway. I feel like that's a huge accomplishment. Oh yes. God. It was a great experience. It was a great experience. <laughs> Did you like it? Um gosh, going into it, I I mean when I first when they when they first told me about it, I was like there's no way. Like I'm not doing that. Like mm -hmm. not a chance. Why? And um Oh my God, that's just so scary to me. One, like I've never, I've never really done that in front of people. I was never really into like drama and like acting on like live on stage, let alone even singing, you know, like I'm just, to be honest, I'm just like not a singer. I love making music, but like my focus is like, I got a good tone. I'll go in the booth. I can do everything from like the art, like the artistic view. I can like write about a song, work on production, record it. It sounds good. And like, you can mess with it and mellow done, but like, going live on stage is just a whole nother thing. And like, those are professionals, you know, those right. are, those are people that like put in so much time. And I saw that, like, I got a little taste of what it's like to even be out there. And like, at the end of the day, like I was really proud of myself for doing it, but those people are just so talented. How many shows were you doing a day? Um, it depends on the weekends. We had two shows. Um, and on the weekdays it was one, but it was probably like, eight shows a week and i did that for a month i feel like that's the hardest thing to do like yeah. sing in front of someone because you know when you was, do when you do broadway you got to kind of be like extra on stage with your movements and your uh the way oh, that you project and stuff like that so bad. I, on my first show i rammed one of the tables on like the side of the stage and like i flew over it <laughs> and then on the last day my like voice went out and like i was like fuck it i'm oh I was like, uh, I'm still going to like go out there mm -hmm. and it was bad. I bombed it hard, but, and I, I'm getting, I was getting clowned on it on TikTok, like getting really clowned on it for like singing. But at the end of the day, like I still did it. It's not something that I do, but I put myself out there and like, Hey, I and you did it. Try something new. I feel like that needs to be applauded. It looks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel like you would do it? Huh? You feel like you would do it? No, no, because number I can't sing and I can't remember lines. Like I, I don't understand how people oh, can actually like. You sit run the script. I ran the script for maybe like two weeks before I even went out there, just like for like five hours a day. Like they really worked it with me, and the people they're they're so nice, like very nice about it. But has yeah. there ever been a time that you were on the stage and you just totally blanked and forgot the line? Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was towards the end, and it was, like, right when I started to feel comfortable, and I was, like, oh, like, I remember I said something that I usually say, and, like, usually people wouldn't give a reaction to it, but I said it this certain way this night, and, like, people laughed, and I was, like, I got this. I was, like, I got it. Like, I have it in the bag. So the next night, I was sitting there, like, throwing out ideas. I was, like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to add this on top of it. And I remember um, <laughs> one of the guys was, like, you should probably just leave it. Like the stage managers were like, don't mess with it. Like, just, just do how you usually do it. And I was like, all right. right bet. But I was like, in my head, I was like, I got this. So I go out there and I'm so excited to say the line that I say the first part and I start laughing. And then I just like completely forgot, just like completely forgot. And the girl, uh, Erica, she was uh, playing Katie. Mm -hmm. She, she is such a blessing. She like, she knew exactly what was happening. She kind of like guided me through the next line. And I was like, thank you. That's Thanks so that. awesome. I love, I love um, coworkers like that. Just, just holding your hand throughout it. That's really awesome um, that she just took your hand and, and went with it. She's just a true angel, like actual master of the craft, like amazing. But um, I felt really comfortable up there, especially with her, you know, like she really like, was, she made sure I was good. Would you say that um, that's harder than, like, TV and movies and such? Yeah. Really? 
Well, I mean, I mean, it just depends. I've never done that level of a movie or like mm. or anything like that. You know, like that's professional. That's like crazy. Um, but I mean, they put in so much work and they have so much talent that it's just like unparalleled. Like even the dancing, like you, if you would have seen me dancing up there, it was bad. I didn't even go on the first number. I went on the like the last part and I was in a lion suit, but you know, it's whatever. I mean, you did it. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not everyone can go out there and just put themselves out there and do something like that. So, brah, that needs to be applauded, okay? I was getting clowned hard. I'm still getting clowned on TikTok, but it's whatever. Like, I'm, I'm about the music. I'm going to let that speak for itself. And, like, I did that to, like, hopefully, like, help myself, like, get more comfortable on, on stage. So mm-hmm. we'll see that, where that goes from the time. Well, the song is good. Uh, used to me. How would you explain that to someone who has not heard the song? Um... It's basically you're you're pushing people away because you feel like you have nothing to offer them and you feel like you aren't worthy of someone's love, kind of. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of that stems from not loving yourself. So you meet someone, you start to feel a vibe, but you already have this in like your conscience, like that you're not of value to anyone. So you kind of just push them away. You tell them, like, don't get used to me because I'm, I'm just here for a little bit because... I'm not worthy of this, you know? Absolutely. Um, how are the fans reacting to the song? Dude, they love it. They love it. And it's so different from what I put out. You know, Why Haven't I Met You came out. And it was a specific type of, like, genre. I don't even know what genre I would put used to me in. What do you think? I, I feel like it has an R&B vibe to it. But really? I'm a huge R&B head, yeah. Okay. Yeah, when I uploaded it, because this is my first time doing everything, like, uploading it to TuneCore by myself. I'm like marketing it myself, doing everything. And I'm just like, it's an alternative pop maybe? Like I have no clue. But um, the reaction's been really well. And uh, I'm stoked. It got like, I think it's at 400K already, like streams mm-hmm. on Spotify, which I beat my initial numbers from Why Haven't I Met You, which was like my best song at the time. So I'm, I'm really pumped on it. And like the reaction's been pretty great. Even my friends have been like bumping it, so. That's awesome. That's a good sign. Yeah. Um, I, I was reading some of the comments on YouTube and one of, one of the comments uh, stuck out to me. It was like, wow, boys have feelings too. Because <laughs> listening That's to cool. song, and you're like, you're, fi- you're in your feelings. Was there any particular situation that happened that made you write about this? Or is that just something that you just wanted to write about? Um, I think a lot of these songs that I'm coming out with, it's more of um, a darker vibe. And this is like when I was going through a really dark phase in my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was going out a lot. I was partying. I was just running from a lot of the problems that I had. And um, I think it just stemmed from me learning how to deal with a lot of things at a young age and like trying to overcome that and, and trying to get back to my sobriety, you know? And um uh, I checked into rehab, and now I'm, like, uh, a year and some change clean. I think I'm, like, 429 days clean. My mom just texted me today. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of this stuff, I wanted to show people, like, what I was going through and, like, the process of that. So uh, this is, like, where all that music stemmed from. So Are you proud from. of yourself for saying that 429 days? You should be. Um, yeah. Yeah, I am. It's... I mean, I mean, one year is so is, is such a little time in sobriety. You know, it's like day by day. But when I look back, I, I never thought I was going to be sober for that amount of time. And especially at the age I was at, because I had been before and I checked out 17 days in because I knew I was going to drink again. I was mm-hmm. like, there's no way I'm 23. I was 23 at the time when I first went. I was like, there's no way I'm going to stop drinking. Like I'm 23. I want to party. I want to I live my life, you know, but um. Yeah, it kicked my ass. And what can I ask? What was it the second time around when you were just like, "All right, we need to get it together. We need to do this, and we need to stick with it." Was there any particular thing that happened? Uh, it, it was a bunch of things. You know, I was I was really mean to people. I was mean to myself. Uh, it was really dark. Like I would just be waking up and I would wake up and drink, go out, stay out all night stay out till six in the morning, come home, sleep till four in the afternoon and just re- I repeated the cycle. You know, I couldn't, um, I had no consistency. 
You know, I couldn't stick with any plans I made. I would come up with a million ideas and they would just go nowhere. Like, um, I didn't consider people's time and I really didn't value anyone's time, which was something that I definitely needed to change. And, um, now that I'm sober, you know, I, I love being accountable and I love being on time and just something that I, I know that I value as a person. And that's something I didn't value back, back then. Who's someone that's been in your corner since day one, helping you along the way, whispering in your ear, letting you know that you got this? My mom, my mom and my dad, you know, uh, my sister, even people on my team, you know, people were really supportive and like really nice about it. Um, yeah, it's been a blessing. Even like some of my best friends, they would like tell me that I had a problem, but it was either they hung out with me and they lived the lifestyle I wanted to live or I was going to go do that with someone else. You know? Right. I, I feel like a lot of the times you won't change because people are saying, hey, look at what you're doing. You have to come to that conclusion yourself. Yeah. And that's what happened the first time. You know, I went into rehab because people told me to and I thought it was going to be like a vacation. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I get to put my phone away. I get to chill by the pool all day. And like, I didn't realize how much work I had to put in until I actually got there. And then. I mean, I checked out 17 days in because I was like, this isn't me, you know. But uh, I went back and kicked my butt, and now I'm here. It is weird to say, like, I'm almost, well, I'm like almost a year and a half sober, but it's weird. Dude, I feel like that's a, that's a huge accomplishment, and I feel like that's something that you definitely need to be proud of. Thank you. Have you been doing anything in, during quarantine, or what's going on? You've been at the me? house? I've been watching, I've been chilling, watching TV, going to the beach. You go to the beach? I just went to the beach, yeah. I met up with uh, my niece, my sister, we played cornhole, you know. I was just actually in Destin, Florida. Have you ever been there? Where's Destin? That's not by Tampa. Is that by, um... I have no clue. This is my first time hearing about it. That was my first time there. I had no clue where I was going. Is that by Miami? I think it's, no, it's not. There's no way. Hold but on, the beaches are amazing. Like, really? I feel like I was in the Bahamas. White sand, nice water. I went scurfing for the first time. What's scurfing? It's when you, uh, it's when, like, the boat's going and, or it's wake surfing, basically. That's what it is. It's wake surfing. Where you, like, surf the wake of the boat. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Destin yeah. is on the panhandle. It's in the <laughs> Gulf. Is so it close to Miami? Miami? No, it's pro- it's close to it's by Pensacola. So, FYI for people. Um, so what's been next? Watching shows? Me? Yeah. Unsolved Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. Yeah. Have you watched it? No. You want to know a show I'm on? What's that? How to Get Away with Murder. Kind of the same genre, but. <sighs> I've never, I've never, of course I've heard of it. I've never watched it. Dude. Oh man, you got to watch it. Um, Annalise Keating, man. I gotta, I gotta check that out. What, what, right quick, before we go, what can fans look forward to in the future? An album. I'm thinking about dropping an album on, uh, an album on my birthday. And when's your birthday? September 8th. Oh wow, Virgo. What up yeah. to all the Virgos out there? <laughs> what are you? What are you? What's your sign? I'm a Pisces. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> I don't know what you got. I'm an emotional Pisces. Okay. Do Virgos and Pisces get along? Or? Yeah, they're friends. They're it's friends. Good. Yeah, we chilling. We good, bro. I appreciate you jumping on and uh, chatting with us. It was a really great conversation. Oh, thank you for having me.